Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to build Line Linux. So we are going to look at what Linux is and everything that has to do with Linux. So let's let's create some partitions. So we will use fdisk and this is a tool to create partitions. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, we need to tell it what disk drive we want to partition. So we will do an ls on uh, the drive, the dev. And here you see a lot of different devices. And I know that I have a disk drive called SDA. So this is uh, one of the drives in the system. And I know that this is the only one, the only serial disk drive that I have in my system. And you can see it by S is probably serial. And then you have disk, that's the D, and A, that's the first one. So let's say that you have four drives, then you will have an SDA, an SDB, an SDC, and an SDD. And all of those can have the different partitions on them. I just have one. And you also see here that it actually has some partitions. It has one, two, and five. And I will remove those because I will start from a new system. I know what's on it before because I have installed Ubuntu on this uh, machine before, but I will remove that. Uh, you can also see HDA, for instance, that's a different type of uh, hard drive. And it's a little bit of an older one, so you might not see it uh, more today. Uh, and disk drives can have other names as well. But let's say that we do, will do fdisk on this slash dev slash sda, for instance. Uh, we have permission denied because I wasn't root. Now I'm root, so I do sudo, and that's super user do. It wants to do something. Uh, and as I'm in a Linux environment here, I can do uh, and, and on a live CD and then I'm root. I don't have to give it any specific password or anything like that. But if you do sudo in a system that is set up with a root account, you need to be a user that can sudo in the system and uh, you need to pr provide your password for a sudo. You can also do su become the super user, then you need to supply the super user password if you have one of those. So let's say, for instance, that we want to create some petitions here. We look at this drive, we see that we have some petitions. Uh, we have one of uh, 16 gigs, which is a Linux uh, drive. We have an extended directory here as well. And then we have some swap. Uh, and the first drive there is also the boot drive. So I will uh, do like this. I will delete these so I can press M for help. Uh, so if we look here, we have D for delete partition. So I will delete the first drive. Um, okay, I need to actually tell it uh, which one to delete. So now I have deleted all the petitions. So if I do P again, I see that I don't have any petitions on this disk. The actual deletion that I did now has not been written to the drive yet. So doing this is not harmful to the drive <laughs> yet, but when you actually write the configuration out, the drive will not know anything of the system. So it's important that you don't do this on a drive with data that you actually want to keep. So you need to do this on a disk drive that you know that it's your disk drive and you will not harm your data. Uh, so let's see here again, we will create a new one. And that's uh, let's see what it's n for new. So I will create a new primary. And I will call that partition one. And they should start at 2048. Uh, so that's the first that I can do on this system. And I saw there that 
it actually had uh, 20 gigabytes of uh, disk space. So I will take 18 gigabyte of that. And uh, so from the first and then I say how large it should be. It should be 18 gigabytes. Yeah, plus, <laughs> yeah, you do plus uh, 18 gigabytes. So that's from the first section. And then you say, I want so much more of it. Um, if you type a specific uh, number, it goes to that exact number. So now I have done one partition with 18 gigabytes. I still have some more space. I would do a primary partition, I call that partition two, and I will take everything on that other partition. And so that's two gigabytes. And the thought I did here was that I wanted one root directory and then I wanted some swap. But in a system that you set up that has more data and maybe have more specific partitioning, you need to do a little bit more work. But I wanted to keep this simple for now. Uh, just create the system and start working on it. And to make this uh, the reality, you need to write this out to disk. And you do that with W. That will write it. So it actually was the case that the system was mounted somewhere. And uh, so you see this hard drive symbol here. You can actually open that and then choose to unmount it in your system. So when you start this uh, Linux drive, um, it actually, <laughs> this live CD from Ubuntu will actually mount your drive. So in order to actually do this uh, that we did here, you need to open it up and then unmount it. So now uh, we are back here and I actually forgot one part here. So if we look at uh, the list here, we can actually toggle uh, one of the drive to bootable. And that is something that we need to do. So let's look again here. We have two drives. Both of them are Linux, but I want to make the first one bootable. So if we look again, we see that that is bootable. So I use the A keyword in order to make that one bootable. Another thing that I forgot is that I actually need to change type of the Linux one. Uh, the second one, I need to make that a swap drive. So let's go in here again. How to change types. I use T for changing types. So we'll go in here. I will change type of two. I will use L to list all the types. And I will look in this list here and see where do I have Linux swap. Linux swap is number 82 in this list. So we have Linux 83 and Linux swap is 82. And you see you have a lot of different types of drives that you can create in this partitioning tool. So now I have set up both these drives. So I have one root directory and I have one swap. So I will write that down. So now the disk is ready to be used. So now we have created our uh, different drives. And first off, we want to create some disk on this drive. Then we will use make fs, so make file system. We will use a v for verbose. We'll use a type, and this should be an ext4. And there's a lot of different uh, drive configurations. EXT is very uh, normal. And those are, these are um, file systems that have been around for a while. I don't know where EXT1 actually went. Um, EXT2 uh, was uh, one that is an old uh, system, works very well. You can use that for boot drives and so on. Um, just because it's proven, uh, it's not the most efficient, it's not the most secure one, but it's a very good one. And then you have ext3. In that case, they started to use journaling. Journaling is that you have a drive that actually re writes down what happens on the drive. And from that log, what has happened, it will figure out uh, the current state of the drive. And that's a very we good way when you 
want something that flows and still be able to uh, make backups and so on. And uh, then we have file system four. So this AXT4, that's the latest one in the series. And it's also journaling and it can handle very large files up to six, 16 gigabytes, uh, 16 terabytes in, in size and so on. Uh, other file size systems that you can use is FAT32, NTFS, if you want to use Windows types, you can use RazorFS, JFS, XFS, and so on. So there are a lot of different types that are available from the Linux kernel. But ext4 is a good one to use in a Linux system. If you don't know anything, you can use that. And then we need to tell it what drive we want. And as we said before, we now have SDA and SD. SDA1 and SDA2, and as you saw in our device list up there when we created with uh, FDisk, we created FDA1 as our Linux drive and FDA2, SDA2 as our Linux swap. So our root directory is what we want to create now. We want to do this with a ext4. So we'll choose one there. And you saw here that I actually got a list of everything that ha starts with SDA. And that's because I wrote down SD, pressed tab, it completed with an A. And if I press tab twice, it will actually give me a list of what I can continue to write. So if you write something in the command line, you don't really know what it's named. You can start typing the first letter, press tab, and it will complete as much as it can until it's need to do a decision. And then it leaves the decision to you. If you press tab again, you will see what choices you have. And then you can make a choice and press tab again. And you can do that how many times you like until you actually find the file or the system resource that you want. So tab completion is a very nice tool in the Linux system. So I will do one here. So dev SDA1, that's my first drive. I will create uh, a drive of that and I still need to be a super user. Uh, do you want to proceed? Yes, I want to proceed. This is uh, one of the drives in my virtual environment, so I don't, uh, I, I don't really care about what's on it. Next up, I need to make swap. So this is the, for the swap drive. We said that this was SDA2. So can I need to be a super user? So now I've set up swap for that drive, two gigabytes. So now we have prepared the first drives. I think I will break this video here. So this video will be a series with lots of different videos. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Linux. And uh, I hope that you like this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any questions or comments, Leave them in the comment section down below and I really hope to see you in the next video.